Hello, fellow armchair warriors. This is Tom, and I'm playing the Japanese campaign in Hearts of Iron 3 using the Black Ice modification version 10.43. Uh, last episode, we kind of left off. We just started the year in 1937, set up the uh, all the techs and research uh, and events, decisions that a new year brings, and are, are proceeding forward from there. We're going to be getting pretty close to the point where war with China will happen. So at uh, probably, uh, hopefully this episode, uh, we'll be seeing me go through the actual builds, uh, how I set up my uh, military units, things like that. But we'll see how we how far we go here. Um, I have some trades that uh, that I'm actually handling at this point in time now. I had the AI trades on for a better part of the year last year. Uh, it set me up pretty nicely to the point now where I can I can let things kind of roll and, and handle it myself here. We don't want to buy fuel though, so thank you. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Um, oh no, we have some being out of a traded resource. So. That it, Britain must be out of metal. U.S. U.S. as well is out of metal. How is this possible? Let me look at diplomacy and metal. No, you know it's, it must be that they're out of. Uh, well, no, I'm importing, so they, they're using my my transports to transport the metal. I don't understand how they can be out of metal when it's saying that, that they have plenty. Must, it's it got to be that they're out of transports. Uh, on that note, I do need to gain about a, another 20. Uh, let's see here. Am I... Wait, Japan have not assigned enough convoys. Say what now? Japan have not assigned enough convoys. How is that possible? My convoys should be... Yeah, they're auto auto-created. Let's let this go. There we go. Okay. Okay. I was getting worried there. Um, I do need a couple things. We got a lot of energy. We're producing 264, over 3,000 from convoys. That must be coming from my puppets, Menjiang and Manchuko. That will probably be changing pretty quickly here. I doubt uh, my, my uh, puppets are going to be giving me over 3,000 every single day in energy. Um, so I, I shouldn't be getting too excited over that. I do need to create a few trades for rares and metals. We've got about 50 bucks we can play with. So let's go to diplomacy. Um, let's start rares off first. And let's hit the Soviet Union first here. Trade agreement. I wish to buy some rares. Um, we don't need all that many. Whoops. I don't need all that many. Let's, yeah, 16 is actually a good amount because I think we're down 10. So uh, buying 16 would actually gain me a net of six each day. We can spend about 50 bucks. That's 20 of it right there. That'll leave me 30 for my other trades. So we'll go and accept that. And the United States, we're going to buy metal because, good God, they've got a lot there. Uh, let's buy 50 metal for six bucks. We need 20. That'll give me a net of 30 already. Now, um, I could sell the energy. Like I said, I don't see that three that positive 3,000 coming to me quite so much. We're trading away 75. We're using 370s. So that's 450 alone right there. We're producing 260. So that's right there. That's a, uh, a 200 that we're, that we're entering into the red. Um, We'll see how much my uh, my puppets will actually give me here. Yeah, we'll let that run for a while. I would like to start selling some energy if, like, it's it's gonna be going really, really good. Alrighty, they've accepted, yay, and accepted. So things are going green, and sure enough, energy is now red. So it must have been just a brief burst of you know we've got a bunch of uh, materials for you, Japan. <laughs> they gave me those. Um, I may have to kill some of my energy trades that I've got going on here. Yeah, we're going down by 73. Uh, Netherlands, we'll go ahead and cancel that out. Uh, Ireland, we'll cancel that out. That's just drips and drabs um, of money here. 42 energy for two bucks. Um, 
Yugoslavia will cancel that as well. And Siam will cancel that. Let's let that go a bit. Okay, we're at 41, 42. So yeah, we need to cancel the Romania trade as well. So that'll bring me down a bit, but that's okay. We'll, we'll be green in that. We'll be green in energy. Cool. Things are looking really good now. So I don't, I don't really need anything at this point in time, unless people want to buy um, fuel from me, for example. I will be happy to sell fuel or supplies. On that note... Let's take a look. Up 363 down. So we're actually getting a net positive every other day. You know, I'll, I'll leave my supplies along the way they are. Um, we're like 0 0.808 money each day in exchange for energy. That's the amount of energy that I'm going up by is not that much. So I don't want to sell any energy at this point in time. We need to start getting our surplus back up. Okay, a bunch of cool stuff happening here. Small, medium, capital, large shipyards, we could say. Uh, submarine shipyards, small arms, artillery, factories. So it went from seven, 15 to 18, 10 to 13, 7 to 10, 8 to 11. Looks like we gained three shipyards all along there. 10 to 12, small arm factories, 8 to 10, and 8 to 10. Supply, so actually our supply per, yeah, supply will go up by 7% there too. Cool. Everything is green across the board. I like to see that. I'll just keep letting things go. There's nothing really new that needs to be done. No changes. Uh, they want to buy energy again. Everything is green. I don't want to, yeah, I want to get my surplus up. Submarine AA Armament, that's 34 tech, we'll leave that alone. Let's drop this down, back down to 35. No free spies. We're, we're spending quite a bit, almost seven points. Let's actually spend a full seven points here. And we're gaining almost 25 officers a day here. We're shy 6,000, almost 5,700 officers. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, let's. Uh, why is that not going up there? There we go. For some reason, it just got stuck. I don't know why. There we go. 35. Maintain that 35. We'll save here. Eh, probably end of February. Stole some uh, blueprints. Superior firepower. Uh... <laughs> I don't know what actually that does for us. Build cost of supply consumption. Red. Um, I do think... Oh. I still plans for superior firepower. Which, I mean, that's this category. Oh, that's here. Oh, which allows us... Okay, so it opens up research into these areas. Um, cool. Uh... We may want to use this. However, Japan is a uh, grand battle plan. This is what they have their bread and butter set up. Um, so, okay, cool, but not too handy for me as far as I'm concerned. All righty. That's actually going to hurt us in the long run. Oh, darn you spies. You just got us the wrong plan. Whatever. We'll let it go. Uh, cool. We're at three descent. We're dropping pretty good. Um, we'll get a radar station, Nagata. That's cool. Uh, capital shipyards go up by additional one. That's cool as well. Government uh, secondary focus. Um, I think last time we did the government nas uh, nationalize the private sector, and we didn't see the, the actual result of that. Um, the negative is either a, a minus five if we if we fail our role, or the positives of plus 15% for money. So we would have seen it under money. We would have seen that that nationalize, uh, nationalization of the private sector or, compens or uh, compensation accepted. Um, we didn't last time, so I'm not sure what happened. We'll go for that again. Um, 
typically I like the uh, organization of the war ministry. Um, but the negative, I don't think we want a negative to our organization before we go to war with China. Uh, yeah, that'd be through the 13th of July there. So let's go ahead and take the risk and see what happens. So, okay, so it, this time we failed the role. Nationalization of private sector is minus 5%. That's all right. Uh, fighter targeting focus to level two. Well, that's good. Uh, this is something I won't be researching for a while yet, so that, that's good to be getting that. So the amount of spies I have going seems to be doing pretty well, um, even though it's showing zero free spies. I like to have single digits in there, so I at least know uh, if I have spies actually active. But seeing that research come in, the espionage come in, that means I do have spies active for sure. They may, I may be in the negatives, or some countries are very low spies or whatever, because they're getting killed off, but I think we're doing it right there. Um, Manchurian Cavalry. Here you can receive a whole Manchukuo Cavalry Corps as an expeditionary force. Uh, I will say, typically, I go ahead and take that expeditionary force. Um, the other option would be to say no, and we would actually gain 1,000 officers, which we're shy about 5,500. That would help us get a little bit closer to 100%. But honestly, uh, at the cost of 2,000 supplies, it's good to get... Um, that expeditionary force, and I, I want to say it's pretty decent. Um, it, it's on par with with my Japanese uh, cavalry forces, and I like to use them in rearguard action. Uh, most of my cav, uh, pretty much all my cav, and uh, specialized light infantry will be heading west, taking over these countries. Um, this, any other expeditionary forces that I get, I think I'll just be using as a rearguard to mop up any. Um, rebel units that appear uh, in, in our in our behind lines there. So let's go ahead and say yes on that. And for whatever reason, we're wait, blowing through a bunch of IC. Um, oh, this, consumer goods. We're OK there. Uh, supplies, we're sitting positive now. I want to build that up to 50,000 again before I lower this any. Uh, this, however, again, try to maintain at 10. Not a big deal if it's over, but uh, that's that's IC right there is a point a little over a point of IC that I put towards production. So right now that's 33, 54, 55, almost 56. That amount of production, all three of these units will start getting uh, full production builds too, and this one we'll, we'll see a little bit. So we'll get another light infantry before war starts. That's cool. We'll have that means we built three. Um, plus whatever we start the game with. Um, my Marine unit, that will take a little bit of time here. Uh, we'll probably have a, a good invasion fleet, a, a invasion force take care of the uh, the, the one peninsula uh, portion of Nat China there. And it says that this is February of 38. I imagine once we go to a full 100%, this will actually drop quite a bit. We'll see. And sure enough, November. This will actually get uh, built before my Marine unit does. We've actually even got some IC half going towards that guy. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let things rock and roll. End of February, we'll go ahead and save the game. And I want to say around April, end of April, very beginning of May is when I start making my moves. I set up my military leaders and things like that. Um, they would like energy for money? No, I'm, I'm actually going up in energy. I don't need to buy your energy. Um, yeah, eight. Yeah, no. And they would like crude oil. We're going up by two. Yeah, I need to. I really need to get my surplus going here. While I would like to get that, you know, those that that buck almost, I, I need I need my surplus. So let's keep going here. Gain a capital ship, cool. Everything's gonna go. So it looks like war finished um, here. Yep, they have a truce with Zibi San Ma. That's this big country over here. They're allied with the Gungsi Click, uh, Nat China, Shanxi, allied with Zibi San Ma, Yunnan, and Xiang Xing. Cool. So war is finished up here. You can see how it all settled down. Um, 
Nat China got a lot of this territory here uh, from the Gungsi clique. Uh, the Communist Chinese um, gained some territory around here as well. So overall, looking pretty good there for, for them. <laughs> for us, eh, idle curiosity. That's about it. All right, another week here. We'll go ahead and save. Carrier light anti-air artillery advance. So we started researching our carrier tech. We're in 1937, so any and all tech that I need to have needs to be 1937, which it is. Carrier tech, though, I consider crucial. So I will research any tech that's 1938. In this case here, you can see we have carrier hangar. We actually are going to go ahead and research that. Handy to have because it improves your CAG um, organization. And I think... Uh, I'm not sure how that works, but I think with the carrier hanger, it works with a side elevator, which gives you that, that improved CAG size for your um, uh, for your regular carriers there. I could be wrong on how that all works, but we'll we'll see. Okay, now this is radar, um, or th this boosts my radar research. Uh, this will it has some. If I say, eh, we don't we don't want that. Cool. I don't have any any penalties or, or bonuses. If we take it, we'll actually get a bonus to a small, medium, and large air search radar. Which honestly, that's only going to help me as far as the small and medium air uh, technology gains go, and radar gain too. Uh, radar helps uh, quite a bit. That two descent and the icy hit. The icy hit goes for a year. Uh, air organization of minus twenty percent for a year. That's very hurtful, but honestly, it's best just to get out of the way now. Um, the Chinese Air Force is a pushover, so that 20% uh, air organization hit, that actually kind of puts them on par with me, or puts me on par to them, as it were. So that's really not that big of a deal. So we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll take it. Um, I do want to lower. We're going to boost this up to yeah, gaining 0 0.02. That way, in 100 days, we'll knock that down entirely. So about three months, uh, March, April, May, end of May, beginning of June. So before war with uh, China, that descent will get wiped out. If it doesn't get wiped out already by an event or a decision that I take later. Okay, cruising on here. And on that note, actually, let's take a look at our um, radar tech. Yeah, I didn't research. I, well, I didn't have radar, uh, radar research, but you can see now... The 3,000 points that went into it have boosted radar tech up quite a bit. So that the next set of uh, research I do requires me to really be in 1939. Um, so very handy. Um, it also helped out the, was it under prototypes? Or no, avionics. It also boosted the small, medium, and large air search radar, which if you see these, they're all 1940 tech. So it really boosted them quite a bit here. Um, that tech here, it just boosts air detection overall. Um, small air search radar also boosts your radar efficiency and provincial AA efficiency. That latter is not a big deal unless you're playing as Germany. Germany really needs that uh, the AA efficiency in their in their provinces. Japan, not quite so much. I mean, it does, but you won't be seeing the uh, in the battles here. You won't be seeing quite as much uh, air combat. Um, Oh my, we need to get this back to 35. So we had slipped a little bit there already. That's doing good, we're up to 31, so we'll leave that alone. And researching 18 officers, getting close to that 95% mark, which is that, that's a 95% I consider a magical mark for me. That's That means if I get to 95% officer ratio when I start war with, with China, I get a little bit of relax. That means then I won't be um, seeing any negatives uh, in my, my battles coming up. 100% would be ideal, actually, just because that means uh, that I'll, I can afford to take some losses and still uh, not see any malices for quite some time. Alrighty, we'll save the game at this point here. It's been two months. And we're going to save the game again roughly around mid-April or so. Tensions to, with China. Dun, dun, dun. So that means combat's going to be uh, occurring here pretty soon. Um, we are going to, you know, see a bunch of troops appear. Um, 
I want to say the majority of them, I don't think anything new appeared per se. There's my uh, uh, Manchurian uh, expeditionary force. You can see it's got the uh, Manchuko flag there. We actually want to take all of these. They're pretty weak units, so I'm just going to have them march on up to Chengde there. And yeah, so I don't have any other units that appeared out of nowhere. Um, I don't, I think that event actually kind of spurs future events to have units um, either appear in Manchukuo or here in China, uh, Japan to be sent over for the war in, in China. Um, I don't think there's anything that really appeared off of that. They would like 11 half, you know, I'm, I'm doing really good now. However, that said, uh, we're going up by 30. Yes, we'll go and accept that. Get almost a buck. Um, we're wasting some IC. Oh, reinforcements. Cool, cool. We're still going down by, actually, by 0 0.01. Let's boost it up a little bit to 0 0.02. Alrighty, so now at the point where with my reinforcements, um, I can just kind of maintain that. Um, it'll probably dip down a little bit further, uh, may go up, uh, who knows. But in any event, cool, we're doing all right there. Uh, getting up into the positives, 20,000 supplies. Once we hit 50, then we'll go ahead and address this here, adjust it so it's a little bit below. Building three units that will all be created this year and working on a fourth unit as well. Uh, no decisions. I got some techs, carrier, medium, anti air. That's 38 tech. I will not research that. That's too far in advance. Um, CAG fighter focus is the other one. Yeah, that's 1940 tech. We won't research that either. You know, I do consider carrier tech to be crucial. Um, I don't go above, two years above, because that will give me, it'll actually take longer to research a tech than if I just wait until we're a year away. Uh, submarine Periscope, that's 1938 tech. Same thinking in theory as well, though I do see we have Coastal Submarine class that we can research. I will go ahead and do that. We can actually now um, research, or. Um, Upgrade coastal subs used to be in 10.3 uh, in earlier versions of Black Ice. You were stuck with the version the level of the coastal sub that you had, but now we can actually improve it. Um, one, later on in the game, uh, we'll be doing a bunch of manual upgrades on units, not to mention also spending IC uh, in getting units upgraded. Uh, among them will be submarines. I'll be getting my subs upgraded there. Uh, even the coastal subs. Coastal subs, even later in the game, will have a use. Alrighty, so if I remember right, this is a pretty unique uh, event here, the Nagoya Pan Pacific Peace Exposition. Um, if we say, don't let the IJA interfere, and was, you know, the IJA wants to like, kind of show how strong they are, how, how powerful the uh, army is for Japan. If we say, no, we, we don't want to see that, we, we get a lot of dissent. We're trying to work that work that away um and for that matter then for uh, for a month here we'll also see uh um, um and i see improvement but also consumer goods hit if we say nah let's let them have their uh their live fire demonstration here um everybody gets a little bit scared of us but we'll gain an ic bonus or uh which we still will be anyway um, and a, a hit to the consumer goods needed uh, for the next month, but we won't won't see that uh, that descent hit. So I'll, even though the threat goes up, uh, you know, our relationship with countries gets uh, drastically uh, affected. Uh, that's fine. Uh, they'll they'll learn soon enough who Japan is and, and what we do. Um, we want to boost this back up. We want to be going down by 0 0.02. So that does, the net effect of that event, that decision we took here, means we'll be throwing fewer IC towards our builds here. That's effectively what that means. Okay, another carrier tech. The, what, which one was it again? Heavy? Heavy anti-air, that's this one here, 1930 tech, so we'll remove that. Carrier vertical protection, 38. CAG bomber focus, 40. So, okay, 
We're down to 46 research techs. We're looking good. And we got a bunch of trades coming in. I don't need anything other than energy. Um, and that's because we traded away some energy. You know, we're going to go ahead and cancel that trade. And we'll go back into the getting a surplus. Yeah. Okay. So we really don't need anything at this point in time, unless somebody wants to buy something from me that I want, that I feel like I could go ahead and sell. Um, maybe some oil. That'd be fine. Uh, fuel. I'd be happy to sell fuel or supplies. Carrier aircraft prototype. Cool. That was the CAGS, which, uh, looking at the prototypes now, we're at 1938 tech. We need to research these things here to be able to get uh, the CAG tech. Um, I want to wait until I need to choose more research before I go ahead and, and go into anything at this point in time. Uh, I went through, chose about 64, 65 techs that uh, I have to kind of work my way through that I felt were very important to have before we had uh, the war happen with China. Road network, cool. Carrier armor thickness, which doesn't appear there. Those type of texts, the, um, is that our nation here? Industry, construction. Uh, these infrastructural technologies, um, I let it go ahead and research, even if it's a year ahead. Like in this case, road network is next year, 1938 tech. Um, but everything else is 1937 tech, which is what we are in now. I keep this going. Uh, they all have, once I build them, they all have bonuses that are very handy to have. Um, a lot to do with supply and, and uh, naval base efficiency, things like that. That will all impact how we conduct our business in China here. Carrier horizontal, that's 38 tech. So we'll go ahead and kick that to the curb. Uh, we have some, that's probably reinforcements. There we are. Upgrades, pretty much staying, we were researching a lot, so our upgrades need has been 80 or higher, I think, this whole entire time. I think it dipped below 80 briefly, but that's fine. It's okay for doing this. Looks like our, nope, it was research, but that kind of went away. It, we now need more, or reinforcements, rather. We need uh, more IC to reinforcements. That's fine. We'll let that go. Again, mid-April, we'll save uh, mass assault. OK, central planning. OK, let's get this back. We're doing OK now. We're at 95%. Let's get this back to 35. And let's kick our espionage down to about 0.65. I see we're now in positive territory. So we can leave that alone. We're gaining 15 officers a day. We just need about 5,000, 4,000 more. OK. Alrighty, we got some more research for our ships. Duke of York, uh, central planning. We get some land organization. Good, just in time. Cavalry exploitation, that's good to see as well. We got a lot of CAV. Um, Light carrier class. That's not, that's nothing new there. We gotta wait till we get some other things researched. They want money for fuel. I say no to that. At this point, money for anything I don't need. I will sell stuff. But yeah, I'm doing pretty good here. Everything's green and above board. Money for fuel. Uh, there we are. That's getting knocked down pretty handily. Oh, 0 0.03 now. That's fine. That'll go away soon. And carrier hull shape technology. 38 tech. Um, actually, uh, you know, we are in 37. 38 tech for carriers. I consider carrier to be a very important um section that needs to get researched. So 38 tech for carriers, I will go ahead and, and research on. Carrier rudder, bulkhead, hedgehog defense. Okay, cool. Ah, 
British blueprint stolen. I didn't see what that was. For those that uh, <laughs> that are watching this, hey, pause the recording right at that point there and tell me what it was in the uh, that I gained in the comments. And we're in mid-April. Let's go ahead and save the game. It's been about six weeks. Alrighty. So we're almost at the point now where I want to ship my units over. Say beginning of May. Um, we got some time left in this video, so cool. Uh, torpedo protection, that's 38. Screws, 38. We keep those. Carriers need to maintain their status. Uh, May 1st, I want to go ahead and move my units over. And then uh, once everybody's set, uh, then I'll go ahead and, and um, start setting up uh, core unit uh, relationships um, and also filter that up the... Uh, the ranks here to my five and six star generals um, and also set up leaders everywhere too. Alrighty, railroad network. Um, this will say okay on, we got cruiser light anti-air artillery, cool. We'd be researching that anyway down the road, but it's good to get it now. Um, railway, I go ahead and research, or I go ahead and buy, even though for the next few months, we'll see an IC uh, and supply money hit of 2.5% because when I do so, we get IC efficiency and supply throughput. Very handy things to get. Um, the others I'll be building once war starts so I can get all their, all their uh, penalties out of the way right away. But it's good to get that going even while you're not at war. Uh, that IC efficiency is very, very handy. Already plenty of time in this episode still, and that means we got enough time to get our units all built up oh so we got a bunch of stuff coming i don't need to buy anything fuel especially i'm green everywheres and we built a new light unit specialized light infantry need to get to my production queue uh, and pull this guy down throw him on the bottom there all right so we built three Specialized light infantry units out of the 10 that I had ordered. Right now, all of my IC uh, is going towards these three different units here. Uh, two of them will be built later this year, another at the very beginning of next year. That one will be, um, and once war starts, actually, I'll have a bunch of IC that's coming off of consumer goods going into here. So uh, all, in, all in all, all this stuff will, will be getting built pretty soon here. And... I may even be, we'll see how things go um, in later episodes. Uh, you'll see how I kind of address my builds. I have a bunch of industry that I need to, to build, and I'll kind of buffer my land builds from my naval builds with some industry. I'll, I'll filter some industry up in there, but we'll see that a little bit later. Uh, reinforcements need to get dropped down a bit. Consumer goods are looking good in a couple months' time. I'll be able to drop that down. And supplies are looking pretty decent as well. Catapults. Uh, 1940 tech. Yeah, we need to kill that. Uh, mobile unit combined arms. Eh, we don't care. <laughs> you win some, you lose some with the espionage. We don't need to buy anything, least of all fuel. And we have no decisions to worry about. Alrighty, so we're in May at this point in time. Um, do I have anything in here? No, I don't. And I think all my other units have made their way to here. Okay. Um, I have a garrison unit. Yes. So let's start knocking off units here until this lights up, saying we're able to ship a guy. There we are. Um, actually, let's knock those guys off, and we will ship all of these guys over to China. Uh, on that note, let's get our Marines and ship them over to Dalian. Um, I think that's it for shipping, right? Or no, I had, uh, oh yeah, I had a couple units here that need to get. Did I not? I didn't send. We need to send a free passenger liner over to here, just rebase. There's a couple of units here that need to get picked up. Um, how are we looking otherwise? 
Okay, good. Okay, let's get those guys going. Meeting popularity, we lost our low popularity, so that's good. That means that should get knocked down. No, same about uh, HMS Howe. Alrighty, now we've got some more units that can get uh, shipped out. Let's get rid of that garrison unit. All of these guys will board him and come over here. Transport. Uh, we're looking good there. Everybody's where they need to be. Um, he can, yeah, there we go. Moving all our units over. Traditional warfare. 36 tech. We need to drop that back down to 35. Okay. Oh, back to tech. Let's get back to espionage here and drop this down to 0.5. We're in double digits for spies right now. That's honestly that's way too many. So we're up to making 25 officers. Uh, we're still roughly about 4,000 below. So it'll be 100 officers every four days in 40 days time. Uh, that will be a thousand officers. So end of June, just before war starts, we'll be at 97.5. Okay, we're looking good there. We won't reach our 100% mark, but we'll get we'll get pretty good. Uh, assault concentration, 33. Machine gun and mortar, 37. Maintain those. Uh, money for fuel, money for fuel, and this, yes, can go away. Looking pretty good on supplies. Um, let's go ahead and shoot this up. We really need to hit 50,000 supplies, especially before we start war. Let's get this up to 30. OK. And I think we have all our shipping done that needs to be done. Yeah, those liners need to come back over there. Let's get our, our leaders started up here. Uh, it doesn't matter who we choose for. Our... Oops, let's snag them all. Is that the only one that's there? Okay. All the rest are still sailing outward. Okay, so we've got our units where they need to be at this point in time. Um, let me see here. That's all set up the way it is. We can't, because it's an um, expeditionary force, I can't change. There's no leader that I can put there, uh, and that's fine. A um, bunch of leaders I can set up here. We have a cavalry unit that can go over there. Uh, the rest can kind of hang tough. We've got a couple light infantry units that can also go over there. Um, okay, good. Alrighty. For our leader here, we want somebody that's really, really, really good, and he looks pretty dang good. He's an assault master. Uh, he's also a jungle master. Um, there's some jungle terrain here in China, um, but being an assault master means the offense and attack speed bonuses are pretty dang good. I think these are cumulative, meaning because the offensive doctrines 5% and 5%, assault master is 10 and 10, that means it's 15 and 15, I believe. Um, I haven't seen otherwise where, yeah, um, I think that's cumulative. Because you can be, I think you just be a master separately. Um, I could be wrong on that, that because they're a master that may be the max that they are currently at this point in time. But anyway, he, I'm going to put in charge of the Kuang Tung Theater because he has a bunch of cool uh, offensive bonuses. Uh, river attack, attack speed, that's nice to have. Trickster, uh, um, that's pretty nice to have there. Defensive Doctrine. There's a bunch of abilities here 
that having him in charge of my overall campaign in China means a lot. So we'll go ahead and put him in charge there. Um, he has a bunch of units already under him. Some of these I, I need to peel off and put to other uh, other units instead, but we'll work on that. We'll work on that. Yeah, it's okay if he has all the air units for right now. We can, as time progresses, um, I will clean up the uh, the hierarchy, the way how everything works. We'll get units in that will um, jump in, take place uh, where they need to, where they need to be. Um, but for right now, we'll let things kind of go as they are in regards to the overall hierarchy. We kind of we do need to get the leaders set up and and also make sure that we've got. Um, units under core command and things of that kind of nature. Uh, next leader, the garrison headquarters. Uh, this guy needs to be a good um, defensive and offensive guy. Uh, so let's see who we got that can handle both of those. Uh, being a jungle master is pretty nice because there's a lot of jungle all around here. He's a trickster, which gives some some defense as well. Military police, that's pretty decent for what he needs to be handling. Uh, Order of the Rising Sun, yeah. So he will be in charge of my overall uh, island uh, hopping campaign going, going on down the road. Uh, my Japanese main headquarter guy here needs to be mostly a uh, defensive leader than anything else. But... I do like that logistics wizard. Yeah, there's some defense there. Yeah, we'll put him in charge. Okay. Now, my leaders, Chinese leaders, need to be really, really good as well. We can put Tojo in charge of one of the uh, five-star general headquarter units. Uh, yeah, Fortress Buster, we do need. Um, I don't think there's too many Fortress There's a few. So yeah, we do need him in charge to help take care of that. Let's go back up to him. Uh, we need to dismiss. There's a bunch of these units are, that need to go to core units, actually. I need to be cautious because the um, typically with a, a headquarter unit, you can only have five divisions attached to you. Um, so in some cases, with the way the game starts, you'll have some headquarter units that have more than the five that they can have assigned to them. So I, I want to be cautious in, in how I go about in uh, addressing uh, my leader hierarchy. If the AI cheated for me and was able to get me more than five units, uh, in some cases, I'll accept that. Okay. Uh, these garrison units. Yeah. He is fine with the way things are. He needs to continue peeling off units here. Those garrison units I'll be sending to somebody else. Same with that, uh, that MP. This guy will also go to somebody else. Okay. The militia. Hmm. Yeah, five militia. We'll say no. And we're actually going to put them, all the militia, to their own specialized core unit. We'll just call it the first core. That's fine. Um, typically, what I try to do is put my higher um, uh, traded uh, units, uh, headquarter units, um, on six stars, and then work my way down from there. Um, try to have as many traits on a six star as I can, and then uh, say five and uh, five star, uh, five stars get uh, you know next many, etc. The since we can go all the way down, you see there's only two traits at most, or at least rather, for some units. I'll put these 
guys onto like garrison divisions uh, for the most part here. The um, the core headquarters, though, I try to make sure that they have about four, I want to say, four traits associated with them. Um, as you see, based on the number of leaders that Japan has, there's a lot of four trait units here and not too many five trait units. I'll save the, the five traits for the, um, uh, the four star uh, headquarter units. So this guy, he's going to be handling militia. So quite honestly, he doesn't need anything special. Um, yeah, we don't we don't want the Order of the Rising Sun. But if I'm forced to take it, that's that's all right. Okay. And we can actually take this old guard guy. That's fine. And then each of these, these are militia units. Um I put them like one step above garrison in all honesty. So I will, they will be attacking. I will have them in a, you know, if, if they have an attack uh, trait, I'm fine with that, but I prefer to use defensive traits instead with my militia. Like I said, they will attack, but not quite so much. In fact, old guard would be nice too. throw all those old guard guys into militias here. Um, the amount that they're going to be used, in all honesty, is not quite so much. Um, the end result, the, these guys will be involved in some early battles uh, against the Chinese. But the their long-term usage, they're just going to be defensive in nature. So we got that all taken care of here. Let's take a look at this unit here. He's got some... Units that need to be peeled off. Okay. This guy's got cavalry, so he is going to just go over here and he's going to scoop up some more cav units. Uh, this guy is all cav and so he's got six units associated with them. It behoove me not to mess with that too much here. Um, we'll have all them go over here. These will be involved in attacks, so I do need um, somebody that's pretty good in attacks overall, but a four star. And it doesn't have to be the best four star there is. There, this guy, he's an old guard. Experience gain and offensive doctrine. While these units, regular divisions, like to try to throw um, three trait guys on them. Because um, Japan has a lot of three trait leaders. Uh, cavalry, let's see here. Well, we can use Old Guard, that's fine. Again, uh, Cav has their uses. Um, I will be utilizing them in an offensive capability for sure, but long term, they're just going to be used for. Um, well, I guess long term, I'll be using them in Burma as well because uh, they're they're pretty speedy in, in jungles compared to regular units. Uh, so I guess that's fine, but they'll be used in mop up operations as well. If there's like some partisans appear out of nowhere, that, you know, that's where they'll uh, that's where they'll be coming into fruition. Okay, so as you see, it's kind of taking shape here. Um, I'm not, I apologize, I'm not fully describing exactly my thought process and in, in how I'm, I'm getting all these units uh, set up. The, the main front here <clears throat> will consist of my heavier uh, infantry units, the, the numbered units like you see here, the Lucky Three, the Bright Six, etc. cetera. Um, and, and they'll be their task to head into Nat China proper, and some will swing over here to assist in, in uh, the conflict in Shaanxi and Communist China. The majority of my faster units, which will be the uh, specialized uh, light infantry and cavalry, are going to be all set up here, and just they're going to their jobs take all three of these countries here and just sweep as as quickly and as fast as as possible. 
uh, they'll be tasked with units that provide that sort of impetus, uh, that speed, as well as attack capability. Um, typically, uh, like Germany, for example, also have uh, speeder units, like mechanized, motorized, and armored units. Japan doesn't have much in the way of that. Uh, I think there's a mechanized unit or two, maybe three, and then uh, three uh, tank units as well. They'll be uh, thrown under the uh, guise of one headquarter unit who, who will help them uh, be the best that they can be. And same with the Marines. I'll give them a, a Marine uh, headquarter unit that'll that'll take care of uh, their needs as well. Um, but as far as building is, I try to throw five divisions in underneath each uh, core headquarter unit because there's not Japan doesn't have that many core headquarter units. I'll be actually creating quite a few here, as you saw, I did with one already for the uh, for the militia. Okay, and speaking of which, all these guys here, I wonder what units they have. Uh, so all these guys need to come over here. This oh, that's the uh, expeditionary force. That's right. Uh, they do need to come over there though. They they're gonna assist in the in the attacks over there. Is that all that's, yeah, that's all that's there. I have everybody else moving where they need to at this point in time. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, two, three units will go there. That'll leave five. One, two. Three units are going over there. I have a Marine that needs to come over here. That's looking good. I need one unit to come down there. And the rest of my infantry coming over there. Now, I also have armor and mechanized. They need to come over there. This guy needs to come over there. Um, my militia units, I'll tag them. They will come over there. And on that note, he actually needs to get assigned to somebody. Uh, he is going to be too far away, but he's probably the most ideal at this point because these guys. Yeah, we'll wait a little bit. I may have to build uh, some four-star headquarter units. Uh, what's we got here? There's a tank here and a tank here. They're coming over there. Is that right? Where's my other? No, they're coming. Next one over. Yep, that one over there. We'll remove them. Okay, I think otherwise we're doing okay here. Um, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I need to peel off some of these units here. Like that garrison unit. Okay, he is set, so uh, I see. Well, that's all right. Normally I try to leave my core units in conjunction with all the units, um, the divisions that are with them in the same province, just to make, especially the early stages here, just to make handling them a little bit easier. Um, probably not that big of a deal for this game at this point here. Oh, he's got a bunch of garrison units. Wow. Okay. He. Okay. Uh, I see. He's associated with a uh, unit that's, or leader that's 
not all that strong, or not close by, rather. Um, he will go ahead and move over there. I have another core unit here. He has the Marine unit. I think I'll go ahead and continue that, keep him going. He has a Marine unit, but we can go ahead and detach him because I already got a core unit, or core headquarter unit moving over to handle that those kind of duties. Uh, and this guy will move over here. This guy. And the command structure of the Japanese was just kind of <laughs> fraught with strangeness here. He's going to go ahead and march over here. I think that kind of takes care of all my leaders for around here at this point in time. Yeah. So we want to go ahead and I want to wait till all my units move that are needing to move at this point in time. So I can kind of, things kind of shake out a little bit and see where things are. Um, yep, he needs to ditch that guy. Yeah, let's wait till we see how things kind of shake up a little bit. Uh, while we're waiting, I can continue with setting up my leaders, however. As you see, each time I set up a leader, uh, that unit takes an organization hit, a huge organization hit. It'll, um, it'll regain its org here uh, before war starts, especially. It's, that's in uh, J July 1st, so we still have a, almost two months before that occurs. But I want to make sure that I'm not um, adversely affecting units too soon. Uh, this is my cal he'll be handling cavalry, so we need somebody that's pretty quick in attack. That's actually not too bad. Yeah, we'll go ahead and utilize him. Uh, these guys, again, they're, they're cavs, so it doesn't really matter too much with them, but they will be involved in some tax and things like that. Okay. Things are looking good so far. Hierarchy, we're not really worried about overly much right now. Um, I have units assigned associated with uh, other headquarter units that ultimately aren't going to be the way that I want it to be. But for right now, I think we can leave it as is. Um, this will be a main attack, so we could probably use somebody like him. Battle expert, logistics. Yeah, let's go ahead and utilize him. And then these guys. We can choose defense, that's fine, but I, I think I want offensive leaders for right now. Okay. Garrison attachment, that's good. We will put in another four star. Uh, general in charge of him there. Garrisons, quite honestly, the, the type of leader that can go with them is somebody that's not going to be useful anywhere else. In this case, military police. That's great. Uh, there's another future garrison leader. Um, we will utilize him. These guys, doesn't really matter to me as far as... Uh, just mean, I just use the um, these guys strictly for uh, shore bombardment, so it doesn't really matter how good of a leader they actually are. Uh, my planes, I actually need to move them, because when you rebase, I believe that also hits your organization, too. Um, light bombers, you want really good guys here that are ground attack kind of stuff. Yep, this guy will do. And he's a light bomber. I will actually have him. What's their range? 700, 790. 790. So we can set him up uh, over here, for example. Real quick. Um, I need a peel. 
peel off one of my fighter bombers to provide escort for the close air support. That's what I like is to have a fighter bomber mixed in with a, um, a group of close air support. So the fighter bomber can uh, provide its um, its bonuses <laughs> to the uh, to the overall unit. There we go. And again, looking for somebody because he's a close air support. I want to make sure that I get somebody that is that. There we go. Uh, he will appear over here because their range is not all that much, 330. Next guy. Throw him in place there. All right? Yeah, seven air wings. He's going to rebase up there. My fighter bombers will also go up there too. I'm just going to have them. Yeah, that guy could do. And my interceptors. I need somebody that will do just that. It's pure air tactician. That's actually not too bad. And lastly, two medium bombers. Actually, I need to build a couple medium bombers to strengthen this unit up some, but he's OK the way he is right now. Um, I'm not going to worry about strategic attacks, so that's not a good guy to have for me. There we go. And we'll send him over to there. So that takes care of all my air units, or at least the ones that I really do need leaders. Um, he needs a leader too, but it'll be somebody that doesn't really matter overly much. Um, my naval bombers, ah, yes, we need to attach a flying boat. There we go. Um, I need somebody that's going to take out yep, Fleet Destroyer. There we go. There we go. All right. Things are shaping up. We're getting leaders in place. Hierarchy, like I said, not going to worry about right away. Um, because there's no malices that that you see uh, in regard in that regards, so we won't, we won't worry too much about making sure that we have our harky set up properly right now. But leaders, we do need to get in place right now. Okay. And with garrisons, doesn't really matter the type of leader they throw underneath them, so long as they're pretty good in, in defense, but also provide um, uh, the bonuses they provide aren't something <laughs> that I don't really need. Like this Marine guy, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to have garrisons doing amphibious attacks or fort attacks, so uh, militia, same way as garrisons. Okay. Got some CAG air wings here. These really need kind of the best of the best. Um, because I, I need my guys uh, on the CAGs to be able to swat down opposing CAGs, but also to take out 
the, the fleets that they'll be going against here too. Alrighty, that's looking good. Um, he needs to be kind of a defensive minded guy, which that fits the bill. Excellent. This guy, we're gonna remove, he's not gonna be underneath him. Uh, let's see, that's good, yeah. While I'm here, let's also take care of all these other garrisons too. Heck, for that matter, let me go to that SLF here, the Marine. And just throw him on there. I do apologize, the video is running longer than I anticipated or wanted to see, but I, I want to show you guys uh, setting up my leaders here and my thought process here. I actually, I do think I will stop the, uh, the video over overall and just kind of finish this off, off the screen as it were, because this is kind of dry and boring. You've, you've gotten the idea of, of how I view setting up my leaders and things of that kind of nature. Um, so I will go ahead and end at this point in time and we pick up, I'll have my leaders all set up. Um, should also have some of my uh, my military uh, hierarchy kind of set up as well too. I won't, won't bore you guys in the details there, but I will spend some time in in the next video in setting up my uh, naval units and show you how those all get uh, arranged. So I appreciate everybody watching. Please feel free to provide some comments, questions uh, in uh, in the comments field. Let me know how you think I'm doing, uh, and I'll be happy to answer any, any questions you might have. Uh, everybody take care, and I'll see you next video.